Harper Audio presents Hidden Figures The American Dream and the Untold Story of the Black Women Mathematicians Who Helped Win the Space Race By Margot Lee Shetterly Read by Robin Miles Author's note. Negro, colored, Indian, girls. Though some listeners might find the language of hidden figures discordant to their modern ears, I've made every attempt to remain true to the time period and to the voices of the individuals represented in this story. Prologue. Mrs. Land worked as a computer out at Langley, my father said, taking a right turn out of the parking lot of First Baptist Church in Hampton, Virginia. My husband and I visited my parents just after Christmas in 2010, enjoying a few days away from our full-time life and work in Mexico. They squired us around town in their 20-year-old green minivan, my father driving, my mother in the front passenger seat, Aaron and I buckled in behind like siblings. My father, gregarious as always, offered a stream of commentary that shifted fluidly from updates on the friends and neighbors we'd bumped into around town, to the weather forecast, to elaborate discourses on the physics underlying his latest research as a 66-year-old doctoral student at Hampton University. He enjoyed touring my main born and raised husband through our neck of the woods and refreshing my connection with local life and history in the process. During our time home, I spent afternoons with my mother catching matinees at the local cinema, while Aaron tagged along with my father and his friends to Norfolk State University football games. We gorged on fried fish sandwiches at hole-in-the-wall joints near Buckrow Beach, visited the Hampton University Museum's Native American art collection, and haunted local antiques shops. As a callow 18-year-old leaving for college, I'd seen my hometown as a mere launching pad for a life in worldlier locales, a place to be from rather than a place to be. But years and miles away from home could never attenuate the city's hold on my identity. And the more I explored places and people far from Hampton, the more my status as one of its daughters came to mean to me. That day after church, we spent a long while catching up with the formidable Mrs. Land who had been one of my favorite Sunday school teachers. Kathleen Land, a retired NASA mathematician, still lived on her own well into her 90s and never missed a Sunday at church. We said our goodbyes to her and clambered into the minivan off to a family brunch. A lot of the women around here, black and white, worked as computers, my father said, glancing at Aaron in the rearview mirror, but addressing us both. Catherine Pedro, Ophelia Taylor, Sue Wilder, he said, ticking off a few more names, and Catherine Johnson, who calculated the launch windows for the first astronauts. The narrative triggered memories decades old of spending a much-treasured day off from school at my father's office at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Langley Research Center. I rode shotgun in our 1970s Pontiac, my brother Ben and sister Lauren in the back, as our father drove the 20 minutes from our house straight over the Virgil I. Grisson Bridge, down Mercury Boulevard, to the road that led to the NASA gate. Daddy flashed his badge, and we sailed through to a campus of perfectly straight parallel streets, lined from one end to the other by unremarkable two-story red brick buildings. Only the giant hypersonic wind tunnel complex, a 100-foot ridged silver sphere presiding over four 60-foot smooth silver globes, offered visual evidence of the remarkable work occurring on an otherwise ordinary-looking campus. 